If you've learned a programming language such as Python and now need to go learn a language such as Java, which has many different concepts, different syntax, it's kind of overwhelming. One of the best strategies I know of is to start with programs that you've written in one language and then try to rewrite them in the other language and compare and contrast how the things that you know translate into similar ideas in the other language. And I promise you there will be more of that than you expect. And to also look for things that you can express in one language and not the other. In this video, we're going to look at Hello World and just look at the basics of how do we start the structure of a program in each of these languages. And in the videos that follow, we'll take a look at more specific concepts such as loop structures, uh, conditionals, Boolean expressions, uh, and all of the bread and butter things that you would come to expect in learning a new programming language. This video is intended for people who have learned the Python programming language already. So if you have no prior experience in that uh, and you're trying to learn Java, you may be best served by finding a video that introduces Java from scratch. So let's get started by taking a look at Hello World in Python. Now, one of the defining characteristics of Python is that there's very little syntactical overhead. It's a very simplistic, uh, language. And that's not at all something that is uh, a slight to the Python language. In fact, it's one of the things I really like about it. They, uh, the, the designers of Python uh, decided that uh, if you want to do something such as just print hello world, well, we've got this built-in function named print and it's available to you at the top level of your programs. And so you can just go ahead and do that, right? And so if we wanted to write hello world, a hello world program, we can have a blank file, one line of code in it. We would add this line and we've got a valid Python program that prints hello world. Python is what we call a scripting language. So this is one of its defining characteristics. A scripting language tends to have as, as a feature, this idea that we don't need to surround our programs in very complex structures. We can just start writing uh, statements at the top level of our program, and that's okay. They, we can define as much structure as we'd like to, or in this case, as with a simple hello world, uh, we don't have to do any at all. Now, if you've written Python programs which involve the idiom of having a main function defined and using the if name is equal to main you know, uh, uh, convention, then you've seen that there are ways that we can enforce our own conventions and, and add some structure to help bring about some properties that uh, give us a little bit more flexibility in our programs. If you haven't written a, a, a main function in Python, that's, that's totally fine too. Um, but now let's go take a look at what it takes to do this in Java. So in Java, there's going to be more syntax involved. Py uh, Java is a compiled programming language, so I'm going to mention that. Uh, and what that means is there's an extra step that exists between when we write our program and when we can actually run it, right? So in Python, when you wrote a Python script, you know, whatever your file name was, .py, you could then say, hey, Python interpreter, go run my program that is in this Python script. You didn't have to convert that program to some other type of file before you could then go run it. With a language like Java, it turns out there's this extra step. There's a compilation involved. And with compiled languages, they tend to, uh, just by virtue of, of being designed for larger scale problems, have more structure involved in them. So let's take a look at the structure of a very simple Hello World Java uh, program. So one of the first things that's going to be a little bit funky compared to Python is we're going to have to define a class. And we're going to give that class a name. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to call this um, Hello App. There's nothing special here. This is just an identifier that um, I'm choosing uh, for the purposes of, of demonstration. And then we're going to have some open curly braces, All right? And so already you're probably wondering like, wow, it seems like there's quite a bit of syntax here that we didn't need to do in order to pull this off in a Python program. And you're absolutely right. So. Uh, one of the distinguishing other characteristics of Java is that it's a highly object-oriented language. And what that means for you as the programmer is that all of your functionality is going to be defined inside of classes. 
you are not going to have functions that exist outside of classes. Uh, you're not going to have statements floating around outside of classes. Everything will be well structured inside of a class in some way. So if that's the case, then you know, having written classes in a Python programming environment, um, what do we need to do to give some functionality to a class? Well, we need to define a method. And here you're going to see that there's going to be some more syntax um, that we're not used to uh, in, uh, in, in Python either. But before we actually do that, I, I want to mention one other thing. These curly braces, these are different from in Python, right? In Python, you would use a colon and then you would indent all of your lines uh, by one. Python is what we call a white space significant language. That means that there's meaning to those tabs that you uh, needed to write in your functions and your if statements and your loops. Uh, Java is white space insignificant. And what you're going to see is that I will use indentation in my program. And this is common and, and a best practice for styling your code. But what's actually going to define what goes, what belongs inside of this class are these curly braces. And anything we put in there, no matter the indentation, is going to belong to the class, right? But for humans, for ourselves, for each other, we're going to use indentation rules that are very similar to Python, uh, just as a convention, but they aren't going to have the same meaning, all right? What's giving meaning to what belongs to this class are these curly braces. So let's define our uh, main method, which is where our print statement will ultimately go. So our main method is going to be declared as public. And this is another uh, type of keyword that we didn't have in the Python language. So I'm going to just make a note that there's visibility concerns, control, or modifiers, right? So what does this mean? Well, uh, this is a little bit beyond um, the scope of this video. We'll come back to public versus private versus protected in another video. But the, the preview, the, the foreshadowing here is there might be some methods that you don't want other classes to be able to access and we'll name those private. And we might have some uh, instance variables or what we would think of as attributes in Python. And we might want those to be private. We don't want anyone else to be able to modify them or see them. They're only for the internals of this class. Um, and in Python, everything's just public, right? By design and by intent of, of the designer of the language, that's just the way that it is. So this is a keyword that even though it exists, it's actually what you're used to working with in Python already. Uh, once we get to private or protected, that's where things will, will be a little bit more nuanced, right? So the next keyword that's required of your main method in Java is static, right? And a static method is going to belong to the class itself. That distinction of does this method belong to objects of the class versus the class itself, and that's the difference between an instance method and a static method, that's going to be a whole other video too, so don't get too hung up on this either. The way I would think about this for the short term is static just means this is a function we're defining inside of the class hello app that uh, objects of type hello app wouldn't necessarily uh, use directly, but it belongs to the class. It's like a function being defined inside of the class. Next, we're going to see the return type, and I'm actually going to make this a different color. I'll make it green, so void. And void is very similar to none, so I might actually make a note of that as well. So um, void and I'm going to draw some, you know, it's kind of like none in Python, right? Void is just going to indicate we have a method that doesn't return any value. It's like a method that returns none in Python. Finally, after all of these modifiers, we finally get to declare the name of our method. And the name of this method is going to be main, right? And next, we're going to declare our parameter list, all right? So our parameter list is... Uh, going to have in it a single parameter, and it's going to be an array of strings named arguments. And this is very similar to Python sys.argv, where we could access the command line arguments when we ran our Python programs in a certain way. Very similarly, these are the exact same arguments that are being passed to our main uh, method as well. 
So uh, the string type in Java, it has a capital S, so capital S string, and it's going to be an array of strings and args, right? Is going to be the name, okay? And I haven't left myself a lot of space here. And I should actually, let me be consistent here and, and draw all of my um, identifiers in the same color. So we've got three identifiers so far. And remember, an identifier, just like in Python, is the name that you're giving to a variable, to a class. Um, in this example, the only one that was like critical to have a specific name was this main name. And that was just by convention of the language. Uh, if we didn't name this main, the programming language wouldn't know what was the method it, we wanted to start our program with. What was the first method to be called when this program begins? And this is the entry point of our program, all right? So now we wanna add some statements, a print statement specifically, to this main method. Well, we need to surround the statements of our methods in curly braces as well. So you're gonna see another pattern. Curly braces are gonna surround our statements. Right, so let me add a curly brace here and a curly brace here. All right. So that's another um, uh, thing that I should mention. So curly braces surround statements, groups of statements, I should say. And actually, I'm going to leave it just as groups because notice um, there is a distinction between you know the curly braces on the outermost uh, definition of this class are going to surround the uh, the method definitions as well as the the instance variables or static variables and we'll come back to those at a different time um, so they're they're de surrounding the, the the contents of this class whereas um, these curly braces around the body of a method those are going to surround groups of statements so let's write a print statement our very first statement in java these were both declarations um, so I'll choose just white here. And uh, once again, we're going to see that there's more verbosity to just do something that was very simple in Python, right? So system is the name of a class that gives us access to, of our, to some of our system uh, resources, including the ability to input and output from our, our, our standard source, which is in this case, the terminal, if we were running this in, in an editor, um, but we're just uh, uh, pseudocoding, or actually this isn't pseudocode, this is, this is real Java code that we're writing uh, on a blackboard here. Followed by out. And what you'll come to learn is out is a member of system. And a member is a lot like an attribute. So it's, it's, a, it's a special variable that belongs to the system class. And it refers to, it holds a reference to uh, our output stream, which is another subject for a later class um, but basically it's what gives us access to the terminal. And what do we want to do with that terminal? Well, we want to print a line out. So we're going to use the print LN, right? And print LN is short for print line. And that's going to print whatever we give it as a string argument here. And we could give some other types of arguments too. We can give this method a uh, numbers such as integers or floating point values and, and other things. And uh, just like in Python, you had the magic method repr, objects in, in Python are going to have a similar magic method uh, as well called toString. But that's, again, more detail than we need to get into here. Uh, it's very simple to know what's happening with a string. So let's just focus on the string of hello world. All right. And I need my closing parentheses and then the semicolon. All right. So this is a statement and statements end in semicolons with one key exception. There's a special kind of statement called a block statement, which is just a group of statements surrounded by, believe it or not, curly braces. And when you have a block statement, when you surround many grouped statements together in curly braces, you don't have to use a closing uh, semicolon following that curly brace. And this is one of those things that feels a little bit unnatural coming from Python. Notice there's you know, four curly braces, one semicolon here. There's a significant amount of more code required to do something very simple. Uh, the good news is once we start writing up more complex programs and, and have something you know, more sophisticated than just printing hello world, uh, 
the amount of excess code that we have to write versus a well-typed Python program isn't quite as dramatic, right? This is just a, what we call a, a, the boilerplate setup required for getting a Python program going. As soon as we start adding other classes and methods and, and, and actual algorithms, um, we'll see that things look much more similar. There will be more verbosity and more extraneous symbols in Python than in, in, in Java than in Python. Um, but by and large, uh, the where this is most egregious, right, is in a very simple program. And that kind of gets to uh, the heart of an important difference between a language like Java. And if we go back and just, oops, uh, compare uh, to the very simple you know, wow, how beautiful was that, uh, that, that Python, right? Uh, that's all we needed for the simple thing. Well, this kind of gets at one of the, the, the key trade-offs between scripting languages and compiled, more structured languages. There's a certain price we pay. And for simple programs, if all you needed to do is print Hello World, you'd be silly to use Java for that purpose. Uh, Python more than adequately solves it. But with a programming language like Python, it's really designed for large scale application development, much, much larger than what we're seeing here. So if you're writing Android apps, or if you're working at Google on, on many of its services, or many banks use Java behind the scenes, um, this structure actually does pay dividends once you're working on larger programs and with teams of people for you know, checking things over your back and making sure that you're not making accidental errors and there is a uh, there is a method to this madness, right? There, there's a reason that we go to all this trouble, but this is hopefully um, a quick introduction to Hello World in Python versus Java. And uh, with that, what we'll do is actually uh, wrap up here. And in the next video, we'll take a look at some statements. So we'll look at variable declaration statements. We'll look at if then else statements and some looping constructs. And all of these statements are gonna be written inside of methods or constructors, which are a special kind of method, right? And from there, we'll look at the different kinds of methods we have available. We'll look at how do we instantiate or construct new objects and some of the imp impacts of uh, where things are located in memory, uh, as well as method calling and uh, maybe looking at some of the standard library, comparing an array in Java versus lists in Python and looking at some of the other things that we have available to us in the language to just help get you oriented with uh, a language like Java, which is an industrial strength programming language that many professionals around the world use, one of the most popular languages in the world. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you'll join me again on the next video in this series of uh, learning, taking what you know in Python and learning Java using uh, all of the, the, the knowledge and the skill that you've already built up. So uh, I'll see you here next time.